Okay, let's take a look at various options we can provide as part of the generator tag that goes under the ID tag, which will be the primary key in our database. So in our test.java, we have instantiated that persistent class and we're trying to save that object in the database. But nowhere in here did we mention the identifier for this field or for this object. Instead, we're asking Hibernate to generate the identifier for us and the way we expressed it is with this tag or we can do the same with an annotation. So now let's take a look at various options we can provide in here and for this purpose I've actually created this document with the name generator.docs. You should be able to locate this in the list of files that you've downloaded. The first of which is assigned. When you set the class as assigned or when you have the same in the form of an annotation then we are telling Hibernate that we will explicitly assign the identifier on our own in our application. In case if we don't do so, then depending on the database, Hibernate will either throw an exception or it would generate an identifier on our behalf. So let's see how the behavior would be in case of PostgreSQL database. So in here, I have this as assigned and now let's try to run the program and prior to this, I've actually deleted the existing table. Now let me run this program. But before that, in order to better demonstrate, let me create a few more instances of this class. And then we'll try to save those objects. I'm going to call this user 1, 2, and 3. Let's change the name to something else, ASDF, it doesn't matter. And maybe um, you whatever it is. I'm going to copy this statement as well a couple of times. And now let's run the program and see how the output is going to look like. So in case of PostgreSQL Hibernate did not report any kind of an exception, although we did not provide any identifier from our application. But instead, it has invoked a sequence with the name assigned. Now what is a sequence? Now that is a concept of database and we've talked about it in our database course. But if you don't know what is a sequence, then we have one example coming. So just hold on for a while till we take a look at an example of the same. But depending on the database that you're using, the output may differ. In your case, Hibernate may throw an exception saying that you have to manually assign the identifier. So let's take a look at what's happening in the database. And sure enough, it has allocated some identifiers based on the sequence. Let's go to the next one. What we have next is the generator increment. So when you use increment as an option, then we're asking Hibernate to generate an identifier and every time it generates, we want Hibernate to increment the value by 1. And the starting value would be from number 1. But if you have some other process that is assigning an identifier to that object, it will have the priority. Then Hibernate will not increment the identifier. Instead, it will use the identifier that you're providing from your application. So let's take a look at an example of the same. So instead of assigned, I'm going to change this to increment. Let's save the file and run the program again. So this time, what I'm expecting is, since 10 is the maximum value, from that point, the identifier will get incremented. So let's do, and sure enough, we have 11, 12, and 13. In case if there are no entries in the table, then the starting value would be 1. As simple as that. And here we have the sequence. So prior to experimenting with this example, we need to create a sequence in our database. In case of PostgreSQL, I can create a sequence by using this instruction. And with this, we're going to start our sequence with number 101. And from that point, we're going to increment the value by 1, which is the default value, unless you explicitly specify it over here. 
So when you try to execute this particular statement in database, let me copy this statement and go here. So it's 106. It's showing 106 because prior to this I've already executed this statement five times. So every time that you try to execute this statement, it will increment the value by one. It's really hard to explain what exactly is sequence in this video. It is more of a database concept, but I hope you got a sense of what it is. So let's move on with uh, this example in here. So I'm going to use this sequence name in our tag, just as we did here, or with annotation. We're going to be introducing a couple of annotations here. One is the generated value. Here you can give any name of your choice, but the name has to be the exact same name whatever you give in here. So basically this is the name that we're going to use to identify a particular sequence in the database. And we also need to provide the allocation size, which in our case is the default value, which is one. That means every time we try to generate an identifier, this sequence will actually increment the value by one. And here's the sample insert query. So instead of explicitly providing the identifier value like 10, 20 or whatever, I'm calling this function next while and then serial, the name of the serial. And this would generate according to the sequence. So I'm going to copy these two lines of code, go back and paste it in here. It's as simple as that. Now let's run our example and see what's going to happen. Okay, we seem to have some errors. We have to import this class. So I'll do Control Shift O and make sure whatever you're importing are from Java X Persistence. There are certain class files that provide additional functionalities, but they belong to Hibernate package. I suggest not to use them because Tomorrow, at later point of time, if you'd like to switch to a different ORM tool, then it would be really hard to cope up with the changes. So always try to use the classes in Java X Persistence instead of Hibernate specific classes. So that will be easier to switch. Now let's run our test program and see things are going to work. And let's see what's happening in our table and sure enough it has generated the sequences. Now these are the most commonly used generator classes but we have few other as well. Although these are not very commonly used I'm just letting you know anyway. So we have one with the value hello so it's just going to generate the identifier by using so-called a hello algorithm. And the way it works is with this formula. When you're trying to express the same in your mapping XML, you have to provide all these three parameters. One is the table and the field. This will be the identifier field. And then you provide so-called a max low. And this is the base value on which this formula would be applied. So it's like whatever the value that you provide, 10 multiplied by one plus one, and that will result in 11 based on the precedence. So this will be calculated first and the result of which would be added by one. And similarly, the value of one will get incremented by two. We get 22 and then again three, 33, so on and so forth. I couldn't think of any real world use case where this would be useful. There might be some corner cases, I'm not sure. But we also have another algorithm, which is this. Again, this is not very significant. And we have generator class identity. This is dependent on the database. For MySQL and SQLite, this is equivalent to auto-incrementing the value. And for PostgreSQL, it is serial. If you provide the type or the class as native, then that means Hibernate will check if the database supports whichever the DBMS software you're using. Hibernate will check if it supports identity, which is this. If it supports, it will use that. Or if your database doesn't support identity, then it will check for sequence. Again, if sequence works, everything well and good. 
If it doesn't, then it will move on with the Hilo generator or it will use the Hilo class. This Hilo class is not dependent on the database because this algorithm works on the Hibernate end and the result will be assigned as an identifier. So Hilo will work in any database that you use. And finally we have a couple of algorithms just like Hilo algorithm but of course they work in different way and these are primarily meant for string type identifiers. So, so far whatever we had discussed is for numerical type identifiers but if you have a string type identifier and you want to use some kind of a generator then you can use these two algorithms. Alright, I guess that's pretty much it. See you soon. Alright, I think that's pretty much it. See you soon. See you soon.